All right, we'll take a look at this next one here. And this is this has to be exciting for everyone that's out there. And this is a new look at POA control. Mesotrione and amacarbazone tank mixtures for annual bluegrass control in turf uh, in cool season turf grass. Uh, for those of you that don't know, amacarbazone is also known as exonerate, I believe. Am I right about that? Yes, that's mm -hmm. exonerate. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. uh, that is the super herbicide if you know how to apply it correctly. That's correct. Well, in <laughs> this particular instance here, uh, amacarbazone and mesotrione were put together in tank mixes of mature annual bluegrass and uh, cool season turf. Uh, and let's see here. In 2019, results in New Jersey were similar to 2018, where amicarbazone alone provided less control than mesotrione and amicarbazone tank mixtures. In Indiana, where the annual bluegrass infestation was severe and most mature, tank mixes were more effective than amicarbazone alo alone at six weeks after initial treatment. But at 12 weeks after initial treatment, all treatments provided poor control. In Iowa, where the annual bluegrass infestation was less than a year old, all treatments provided similar control throughout the experiment by greater than 80% at the conclusion of the experiment. The research demonstrates that sequential applications of mesotrione and amicarbazone can provide more annual bluegrass control than either herbicide alone, but efficacy is inconsistent across locations, possibly due to annual bluegrass maturity and infestation severity. So, and I, again, I know, and I want to make this point clear because what people are going to say is like, I heard on the damn burn and return podcast, if I mix up a $1,000 bottle of exonerate, and a damn three hundred dollar <laughs> bottle of, of tenacity and went and sprayed that shit. It's gonna kill my damn bluegrass. This is not what we're saying here. What you have to look at are these percentages and the variables that they've at least presented to us at this point. We're talking about seventy percent control, eighty percent control. So think about it. If you had a, a one hundred percent coverage of your lawn of annual bluegrass and you attempted to kill it all with this kind of tank mix, we're talking about you losing. 70% of your lawn, 80% of your lawn. That means 30, 20, 10% of it is still there. It's not a complete and total guaranteed elimination process. But in terms of what people are currently being able to do, this falls in line with some of the results we see from at the fumigate and stuff, right? So again, positive. These are, these are more AIs in different combinations that we can use to help diversify our approach towards POA management, POA suppression, moderate levels of control, moderate to good levels of control, not a smoking gun. And I swear, if I get one email about it, I'm probably not going to read it anyway. So you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think that's the, the, the thing is that, uh, you know, what you look at and they talk about, you know, using this mixture in the spring, Ray, and then coming back with the fumicate, right, in the late summer, fall and trying to use some, some type of a program to keep it at bay. Like you're never, ever, ever going to rid yourself of it and completely eradicate it, but using all the tools in the toolbox here. I thought one thing that was interesting too, that we didn't really go over that should be mentioned, right? Is, and, and Ray, you can speak to this, especially in warm season and Matt, you too, is anytime that we're asking chemistry to take one grass out of another grass it can be a little tricky right and when i say tricky i mean you can fuck you can fuck some shit up right mm -hmm. and now here's the thing that gets even it raises the degree of difficulty is that we're trying to take out a grass that's in the same genus right poa as Mm -hmm. The grass that we want to keep, which is Kentucky bluegrass and some of these test sites, Poa pretensis. That makes it even more difficult. And so what you see here, and the one thing I want to highlight on this is at varying rates, they show what the injury level is on some of these grasses. So we know that, um, you know, repeated applications, even at low rates of, uh, of tenacity can be injurious to tall fescue. On Kentucky bluegrass, the uh, exonerate can have the same effect. And so an injury incidence as high as 34% of our Kentucky bluegrass injured through these applications. So there is some collateral damage here. And it's not something that 
you know, should be taken lightly. But I thought it was interesting that, you know, again, they're not just looking at a complete program, right? Because that varies too widely. They got to really drill down and look at these individual treatments and timings and different sites and all that kind of stuff. And you can see how wildly inconsistent it is. It's, it's not there. It's not something that you can point blank say, Hey, if you're in the Midwest, if you're in the mid Atlantic, if you're in the mid South, if you're in, uh, you know, Washington state, yeah, pull the trigger on this. That's not what this is. So yeah. take it with a grain of salt, yeah. but it's good info. What do you think, Ray? This is, I, I agree with this because, you know, I've talked to various people in the discord about a POA management program on their pool season grass. And I've never had somebody come back to me and say, Ooh, this sucked. It, it didn't work. And the reason why they didn't say that, of course, is because the emphasis is this is not a one and done application. This is not a two and done application. Controlling something like POA is a long term suppression slash management program. And speaking to your point, I can see how. And a spring application of exonerate plus tenacity segues into a late summer and fall application program involving progress yep. that may or may not have additional tenacity added to it. And I don't look at this in terms of just going after four, because by the way, Ryan. If somebody is applying mesotrione, amicarbazone, and esophumacete to a turf area, do you know what else they're also controlling? Tell me. They're also controlling goosegrass and crabgrass. Good point. Okay, because, you know, you're probably thinking, oh, so I'm applying all of this, you know, stuff to the turf area. I look at it in terms of what else is going to be affected by this treatment program. And by the way, I often include that in my calculus whenever I select a particular treatment program for an area of turf is I often ask myself, what other weeds do I need to get rid of here? What is the actual side effect going to be of this? Yeah. And that often influences, for example, what I actually put into my overall treatment program, because I don't only think in terms of just one weed. I, I kind of take it, you know, rather holistically. <laughs> you can't. And I think that's the, I, I think it's a great approach to take Ray of Poe annual management is that it is a holistic program that you have to run and mm -hmm. setting the bar for what, what you would consider to be successful should not be, Oh, I should never, ever, ever see Poe out there unless you want to pick out your pocket knife and go out there and pick out every last plant mm -hmm. that's still left. And God love yeah, you if you do. And, and, and Ryan will supply the case of Keystone too. <laughs> Listen, I've been through, I'm going to go ahead and say hundreds of beers, picking Poa out of greens, plugging Poa out of greens, just every, every year. And it worked. It mm -hmm. was fine. But yeah, you can't rely on chemistry alone. So, all right. What do we got in the mailbag, Mr. Matt? Thank you for watching this clip. Be sure to tune in to the Burn and Return podcast on any of your favorite podcast apps every Wednesday, where we discuss the industry's hottest news.